uh, when we were growing up, when you saw a person pastor a church, they were doing it full time. You know, they, were, they left everything to pastor. But there's a model that God is raising in this time of more people who can have one feet in the, behind the sacred decks and they're behind boardroom. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a model. It's a Joshua model, actually. That's what God is doing because Joshua raised up people who were worshippers, walkers, and warriors. So in going to the promised land, they were priests, but they were also taught to walk. Immediately they crossed Gilgal, manna stopped falling from heaven. So you go to walk. So they stopped looking up to heaven. They started looking to the ground. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it was no supernatural supply. It was scientific engagement. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the, the people Joshua raised were involved in the marketplace. They were, milk and honey does not fall from heaven. The land flowing with milk and honey. But they didn't go in there and just saw a stream. Now nah, come, let's go and fetch honey. No, that's not. When you want honey, you go to the beehive. You didn't get what I'm saying. If you want milk, you get a, you understand, get a flock and you tend it. Are you getting me? You produce milk and honey. So the kind of people God is raising right now will not just be prophetic on Sunday, they'll be productive Monday to Ah. <laughs> Tongues must translate to ideas. Don't, don't reduce Sunday experience to Sunday. Don't be a Monday morning atheist. What you're experiencing here should empower you to change the marketplace. And then they were warriors. They went in and took giants. So that's what we are modeling. That as many who are here who think, man, I can't be pastor. Jethro and his wife are showing you that you can be pastor. Look at someone and say, yes, you. I don't like the way some people are looking at me. Go to, go to 10 people. Make sure you count 10. And say, you too, you can be pastor. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Go around. Uh, I'm, I'm working a job. I'm in, the, I'm in the oil industry. Yes, you. I'm in the I'm in entertainment. Yes, you. Uh, I am, I am, I am. No, you, no, no, no. You can't. Wait, wait. Oh. Jesus didn't say, go and become a pastor. Go and become a bishop. Or go and become uh, an entertainer. Or go and become an IT professional. He said, go and make. So you are in entertainment in order to make It even said, go and marry. You marry in order. Aye. One shall chase a thousand. So if you are not chasing a thousand, you are not qualified to marry. Pastor, the way some people are looking at me around here. Pastor, you, Pastor I want to marry you. My, 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 my parents need their grandchildren. That's not the basis. Have you chased a thousand? Do you have a thousand disciples? Pastor Gideon, Pastor Gideon, calm down. I'm not coming down for you. There's much more in you than meets the eyes. I say you too can lead. You too can be a spiritual leader in God's. I see this is here explode. That's what I'm just. I just see. I see multiples of people. I stood here. Immediately I got here. I saw three, four services in this room. I listen to what I'm saying. In the next, within the next one to two years, you're going to explode and there are going to be more expressions, satellite centers, viewing centers. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And look at your neighbor and say, he's actually saying that you are the one that will pastor one of those churches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my assignment this weekend though. Pastor Mildred and Kisley have invested too much in you. We need return on investment. Just come now. Feed me, man of God. Give me deep word. I'm not deep, not, not deep word for you now. All the deep word that you are, that's why you are so deep, we can't find you. You, you want Greek, Rema, you don't even know how to speak English yet, but you want Greek. You want deep, deep rev. But look at someone and say, he's talking about you. You too can lead. So, so thank you, Pastor Jethro, for all you do. Let's celebrate you. My associate pastor, Pastor uh, Zach, is here today joining us. He's also in that space. He works with Nestle. And 
So all this, no excuse. You are going to become ambidextrous. Three in one. They didn't get, they don't, they, we are not here. Uh, look at someone say three in one, not, not coffee. Three in one. Up, in, up, in. So what we are doing here on Sunday, some of you are, why are we standing? This man will sit down now. They're not sitting anything. Your sitting has not helped Lagos. Stand. People are in parties through the night, standing for nonsense. What was I saying before I was distracted by that? Ambidextrous, up in and out. So what we're doing here is our up. Then in the course of the week, you must be in groups where you do your in. And then you must, we are going to create, with pastor, uh, the pastors of the church, we're going to create systems where you will be in a missional group. Where you'll be in a, in a group that your assignment is to win a soul a week with those people in the group. Somebody say, say to somebody, up, in, and out. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, sit. Let's just see what we can do. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our head in worship as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. The presence of God is here. And the honor. Lord, we lift our heads in worship as we bless your hope. For you are great. I. You do miracles so great And there is no one else like you Animata There is no Jesus, you are great You do miracles so great And there is no one else like you Ayadove Skata And there is no you are the awesome God. <laughs> How great thou art. Azemakata. You are God. Mighty are your me. I stand in awe of your holy name. Lord, we bow and worship you, Lord. I bow and walk. Sing it one more time. You are the awesome God. How great thou art. You are God. You are God. Mighty are your me. Miracles. Yes, I stand in awe of your holy name. You may be seated for a bit. I won't go through reading all of the text. If you listen to the message, uh, the message in the first service, you will be able to get uh, the reading of the text so that we can walk with the time we have. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, uh, a situation where Jesus saw the multitude and he wanted to feed them. And we said in that first service that there is a multitude to reach, there's a multitude to teach, there's a multitude to lead, there's a multitude to feed. And you are one of those who God is counting on to feed them. Oh, look at someone and say, Yes, you, yes, you, yes, you. And so, uh, uh, building on that thought, uh, when Jesus had asked them and told them to go feed this multitude, they came back to Jesus with an answer. And they said, um, Lord, and they said to him in verse 37, Mark 6, 37, and they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? 
And then verse 20, 38, he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And, while, and when they found out, they said, five and two. Mm. And two fish. And so Jesus wants to feed the multitudes. He wants to uh, uh, cover the city with his word. He wants uh, Lagos and the cities of this nation and the nations of the world to experience his bread, the revelation in this house. Uh, did we conclude that there's food in this house? There's food in this house. The revelation, the bread, the doctrine, the, 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 the message of this house is what uh, uh, feeding the nations with and Jesus wants to do that and so he wants everyone to become part of his mission he wants you to become part of his mission which is to reach the lost to restore the world and to reproduce disciples someone say reach the lost talk to me say reach the lost say restore the world and reproduce disciples. That would be a good thing for you to write down. That's the mission of God. That we reach the lost. That we restore the world. And that we reproduce disciples. As Jesus says the son of man came. But to seek and to save that which was lost. So we are, we are here. To, the agenda is to reach the lost. The mission is to reach the lost. Uh, the mission is also to restore the world. In restoring the world we are saying we need to solve human problems. We need to get into human civilization and become the light of the world and the salt of the earth. I didn't get any amens. Uh, so uh, we want to reach the lost, but we also want to do everything we can to create worlds and systems and environment that, is, that makes the world a better place. So that's why you go into the marketplace. Because in the marketplace, you solve human problems and you meet needs, you produce services and products in order to meet real needs. And in, in meeting those needs, you are, you are restoring the world. You are doing something. The difference between you and an unbeliever in the marketplace is that an unbeliever has solutions, but you have redemptive solutions. Oh, come on, did you hear what I just said? Uh, you have redemptive solutions because you, you, you solve problems with the Holy Ghost. You solve problems and, and beyond just solving the problems, uh, you, are, you reach beyond just the problem being solved and you begin to solve eternal problems. You don't just solve material problems and, and, and you know, uh, uh, problems that has to do with human coexistence, but you solve problems that are eternal, which means you're making up the room of a person. You're an interior designer. Whilst you are doing that, you must have in mind that you are not just recreating that space. You must have in mind that you are restoring that world so that you can reach souls. So that you are, whilst you are making that room and, and creating that place, you are praying under the whole, under your breath. And you're saying everyone that steps in here, everyone that sleeps on this bed, everyone that opens this curtain. Am I talking to somebody in here? I'm saying that you are more spiritual than you can imagine. You make hair and you, you, are, you, are, you own a barber shop. You have an opportunity to lay hands on more people than your pastor in the course of the week. These people, Pastor Jethro, I say these second service people, they know they feel me. I said you are supposed to, you lay hands on people. You are making hair, you think you are just making hair. No, no, you are a priest. They thought you are a stylist. No, you are a priest that is functioning as a stylist. They thought you make clothes. No, you are a you are a priest. You are a Holy Ghost Babalao. You didn't see it that way. You thought you are just into tech. No, no, no. Shikapala Daka. You are dealing with the spirit of, of, of the air. You are dealing, you are in media. No, you are not. No, you are dealing with certain things because you are not just there to solve problems. You are there to provide redemptive solutions. Are you getting what I'm saying? Which means more miracles should happen Monday to Saturday than on Sunday morning. Oh God, you didn't hear what I said. Thank God for miracle services. But can we have miracle servers? <laughs> can we have people who serve, ministry, who serve miracles at will? Jesus Christ, our model, he did more miracles outside church halls. Am I talking to anybody in here? He did more miracles. He went to some fishermen. They had toiled all night. 
And he said to them, calm down. First of all, give me your boat. How do you tell a fisherman that had a bad day, give me your boat? The guy was going home to tell Mrs. Peter, nothing happened this night. And then you're telling the person, give me your boat. So the guy gives him his boat. Then he turns a boat to a pulpit. I can preach on that one for a long time. Your business is not just a business. Your business is God's pulpit. Until you start planting and betting businesses with a mindset that this one is pulpit one, pulpit two. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. That Jesus can sit on your business and teach the multitude. Did you get what I just said? The boat of a fisherman is this is his business. The boat of a fisherman is his capital. The boat of a fisherman is a major means of production for that fisherman. Jesus Christ said, give me that your business. Let me sit on it and do ministry. Uh, give me that your blog. Give me that your social media page. Let me sit on it. Look at someone and say, don't be fine for nothing. Don't be fine for nothing. Don't be all your pictures you take on social media has not saved any soul. You are misrepresenting our kingdom. Somebody should see that fine picture and call you and say, and think he's just toasting a girl. He doesn't know he's toasting a babalao. <laughs> toasting a crazy person. And he thinks you are just on heels. He don't know that you get on your knees. I need to preach this message in the line. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? So Jesus wants to see you participate in what he's doing. So he said to them, you guys go out. Jesus had a, he has a mission. And that mission is restoring the world and reproducing disciples. He wants to make disciples. He wants to multiply us. He doesn't want us to be few. He wants us to, 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 to participate with him in changing lives and the world around us. He wants your life to be significant. And I dare say to us, he wants us to become a movement. Did you hear what I just said? A movement is an organic, uh, uh, you know, explosion of an ideology as a result of people catching it and they are able to express it beyond where it started. And God is saying, DCC and what you carry, this army called David Christian Center is supposed to recruit more people around the nations of the earth. Am I talking to somebody in here? And so Jesus said, go make disciples. It's clear. That's what he asked us to do. That's what the church is. That's why we open those doors every Sunday morning, making disciples. That's why the air conditions are running. That's why the multimedia is up. That's why the singers are singing to make disciples. Look at someone and say, we produce disciples here. So when the multitudes came, it was the disciples Jesus spoke to. He didn't speak to the crowd. He said to the disciples, you feed them. Pastor Jethro, what God wants to do with DCC, he won't do just with church attenders. He will do it with disciples. Oh, did he? To feed the nations. Just people just like to shop for church, can't feed the nations. It is people who have become disciples. Who is a disciple? One who is following after. One who is a learner. One who obeys. Make disciples of nations, teaching them to obey. You are not a disciple until you can obey. Uh, come on now. You are not a disciple until you can. You are also making other disciples. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The sign that you are a disciple is that as you are following Jesus, there are men following you. Men, you understand men. <laughs> the ladies, I'm not saying all men. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying human beings. Your, the, the, the fruit of your following Jesus is that people are being discipled by you. And we prophesied yesterday that the little one shall become a thousand. Oh, you don't believe it. I said the little one shall become a thousand. And we give a practical way that can happen. So Jesus wants to make sense. So but Jesus wanted to feed this cousin. I'll quickly get into the into three things that Jesus said or did that will allow us feed this mountain and become a missional church. The first thing I want to say is step out. Look at someone says step out. In verse 38, look at it. Uh, if you're going to become a missional church, if you're going to feed this nation, if you're going to be part of what God is said to do, he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. Mm. I like the word go in that verse. It jumped at me. Go and see. Look at someone and say, go, 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 go. Uh, until you go, you will not see. 
Did you hear what I just said? Until you move, you will not see. Until you accept to become a discipler. Until you accept to preach the gospel. Until you accept to say, this week, I'm going to share the gospel with someone. Uh, until you say, I'm going to join this missional community. That our assignment is to be on a mission. Until you go, you will not see. He said, go make disciples. Until you go, nothing happens. The command is to go. Look at someone and say, he's commanding you to go. He's commanding to go. The secret of multiplying to increase to supernatural significance is to go somebody has to go you have to go so that you can see you've got to go so that you can discover you've got to go so that you can find out if you don't go you can't get a certain revelation so it is in your going that you see oh don't wait to be anointed just go oh look at someone say this week go so you need to set a target and say, I'm going out, I'm stepping out, I'm stepping out and I'm going to see what God can do. Listen, until you go, until you step out, you will not be able to see what God can do with you. If you don't go, you will not see. Uh, you, you will not see what you have. If you don't go, you will not see what you can do. If you don't go, you will not see how many lives you can touch. If you don't go, you can't even know how many missional communities you can lead. If you don't go, you will not ever know how much God has put inside of you. Uh, the revelation you know you, you you have is going to be based on your ability to go look at someone and say go now you're sitting down too long and I want you to go to seven people and tell them go stand up go to someone and say go 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 you may not even know where you're going to but please go go to the nations go and talk to your neighbor about Jesus go and talk to your boss about Jesus go and talk to your friends about Jesus go online go online go somewhere go somewhere look at someone said go if you've not left your seats there's something wrong we need to pray for you and cast out some devils I said get out of your seat and go to five people and say I hope you're going as you go, as you go, as you go, as you go, listen to me. Wait, 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 wait. Did you hear Jesus said, as you go, heal the sick. So until you start going, you will never experience the miraculous. It is going people that perform miracles. You see, when you go, you start putting God on the spot. The reason why you've never healed the sick is that you have never gone to a, a to hospital and said, I want to pray for everybody in this world. The power there your hand, but you just say, ah, no, 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 your, your power is just for ushering in church, no, you have to get the same hands with which you usher, the same hand you play this keyboard with, sir, this same hand can heal the sick if you go. Am I talking to somebody in here? Well, I came to announce to somebody there's something in your hands. Uh, and if you go, you see how powerful you are. How many of you uh, have been in an environment where you suddenly were put on the spot to pray for somebody? You didn't feel anointed. You didn't feel like it could happen. You just said in Jesus' name in the hope that it would happen. And something happened and you felt, ah, ah, me too. <laughs> Certain things can happen with me. I decree and I declare this week, as you step out and as you go, you will see what God can do with you as you step out you will see how god will heal your your neighbors heal your colleagues as you go as you begin to counsel somebody as you begin to set up those online platforms as you go you will see the power of God. Look at someone and say, step out, step out, step out. Help me demonstrate it. Say, I'm stepping out. I'm stepping out. I've never done it before, but I'm stepping out. I've never preached to somebody before, but I'm stepping out. I've never, I've never invited someone to my home for a missional committee, but I'm stepping out. I've never led before, but I'm stepping out. Go and see. It is not see and go. It is until you go. You will see. <laughs> Ooh, I can't even go into all what they saw. Maybe in the next service at, Mer at the island, I'll talk about what they saw. They saw, what did they see? Two fish, five loaves. That's a message on its own. We'll preach it some other time. But they saw something. Tell somebody there's something, there's something, there's something. The second thing, please, if you sit, is that beyond stepping out, the next thing is sit down. Look at someone and say, sit down. So if you read on, the Bible says, when he said, go and see, they came back to him. And in verse 39, he commanded them to make them all. Come on, did you see that? 
So the first thing is step out. The second thing is sit down. Sitting down uh, was quite interesting, Pastor Jethro, in order for this miracle to happen. In order for everyone to be fed, there needed to be a stepping out, but there needed to be a sitting down. Sitting down means that uh, in order for this bread to get to you, you have to get in position. This bread will not get to you just because you want it. You will not be able to distribute this bread just because you want it. There's got to be structure. There's got to be systems. Am I talking to somebody in here? Jesus wants to feed the nations, but he's looking for an organized army. He wants to take this church to another level. He wants to multiply. I'm telling you, I've, ne- I've preached in this church for going to 12, 13 years. I've never felt what I feel in this particular assignment. I sense that this is about to explode in number. And you know why I know so? Because you came this Sunday morning. You know why I know so? Something is about to happen. People are about to step out and begin to bet certain things. They're about to step out and lead missional communities. They're about to step out and say, Pastor Jethro, I will get in line. I will step out, but I'll also sit down. To sit down meant that Jesus was saying to them, I want to get the bread to you, but there is a systematic way. If they didn't sit down, Jesus wouldn't have been able to feed all of them. There would have been confusion and stampede. Am I talking to somebody here? The bread will be available, but there will be inefficiency and ineffectiveness in getting across to the people. Your church, I believe, already has some fantastic systems and structures. And I want to say to somebody, uh, it's time to sit down. Sit down in, put it up. In what? Groups? Put it up there. Put it up. And you to sit down. They sat down what in? Look at someone say there are ranks. You don't believe it. All these people that are civilians. I'm talking to my soldiers, my SSS. Look at someone say there are ranks. Everybody is not the same. Uh, this is our church. They just get some people to sit in front. No, that's what it's called double honor for those who do double. You can't be just playing during the week and you want to get the, 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 the same you know, recognition and the same uh, a celebration with people who are giving more of their time. There are ranks. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I can't even go to that. You sit in ranks. So this is an army. We must be orderly. Look at someone and say, we must be orderly. It has nothing to do with age. Somebody younger than you can be in charge of your troop. Sit in ranks, put it up there. Sit down in ranks, sit down in hundreds, and sit down in fifties. And so they had to sit down. There's something about sitting down. Sitting down means that you, you, are, you are structured. You belong somewhere within the structure. You can't just be coming to this church with what God is said to do. And you're just coming and going, just coming and going. And you don't belong anywhere. You don't belong to any team. You don't belong to any mission or committee. And the things are going to be better. Right now, if you're going to be part of feeding the multitude, you must sit down in a space, in the structure. You must find yourself plugged in somewhere. People who are in church and they are not plugged in are cancerous. You know how a cancer develops? Anything that is growing outside the body outside the normal structure of the body, but it is growing. Ah. So if, you are, if, if, a, if a thing is growing or a part is growing without it being receiving supply from the body, it is not growth, it is cancer. So when you come to church and you're not part of the system, you're just coming to receive, you're not part of the system, you become cancerous and you just say, me, me, my, my, see, I like this to see. One and a half hours, two, one hour, four, five minutes, I'm done. I just come worship my God. You don't even know worship. Jesus was going to teach us about, about prayer. He said, when you pray, don't pray my father. He said, pray our father. you get it next Sunday. All this, my, my personal relationship with God. I don't want anybody in my business. I just come and I go. I love Jesus. I love him. Two hours a week. The rest, don't worry, don't ask me where I came from. Don't ask me where I slept two nights ago. Don't ask me who I'm in relationship with. I just want to enjoy this church and go. Ask your neighbor, is he talking about you? I don't like church people. They, I don't want to get into church people. I don't want to do business with church people. I don't want all this stuff. They just be running around. They, they, uh, ushers just clapping. I know I'm not into that. Uh, uh, you are missing out on inheritance. You are missing out on power. You are missing out on glory. The bread will be in the house. It won't get to you. It's those kind of people that misrepresent DCC. 
It's those kind of people that go and marry somebody that is still not born again. After all 20 something years of teaching on marriage, you still go and say, Pastor, he's fine. Like, fine is the fruit of the Spirit. Pa Pastor, Pastor, he takes me out. He takes you out to where? Does he know how to take you into God's presence? Let me just not go there. You not marry a man. You just how, why should you marry a man? You shouldn't marry a man. Not after being. You should look at your lady beside her. So don't marry a man. Tell them marry a mandate. I'll give you another kind of man you should not marry. Can you handle this one? Don't marry a man, no. Marry a mandate. Secondly, <laughs> don't marry a man that cannot handle a pregnancy he did not give you. The way Pastor Jethro is looking at me, let me arrange myself. I feel somebody's getting the revelation. They are called Josephs. I said they are called Josephs. They can see the baby that Mary is carrying. No be me do this thing. Mary waiting happen. And Mary can look them in the eyes and say, it's not any other man that gave me this baby. Ah, it was God that gave me this vision. Don't marry a man that cannot handle the call of God upon your... That is intimidated. He said, are they pleased? That I don't like women in ministry. That's not your husband. Pastor Jethro, my time is up. It's because of the way these people are responding. I'm trying to preach the message. So tell somebody, sit down. Sit down means you'll be discipled. Sit down means that you will see the food coming. It has not gotten to you, but you must be disciplined to wait. Sit down. Am I talking to somebody in here? Sit down means they've not given you the microphone, but the food is coming. And don't quarrel because you are not yet. Am I talking to somebody in here? I've been in this church. They've not made me a leader. Sit down. Sit down means emotional intelligence. It means character. You know, hungry people are angry people. 5,000 hungry men without women. If they were Nigerians, it means they came with their wife and five children. So calculate how many people were really there. Look at someone say, sit down. So we're going to form groups. We're going to set up groups. Missional community group. Going, we talked about it yesterday. And somebody's going to invite you to be part of a group on a mission. A, an evangelism group within our system. Once they invite you, remember. Tell your neighbor, remember to sit down. And then the last thing is, you see, in sitting down, it's very powerful. I need to say this. It is in sitting down, you become accountable. And I say to people, your life will never count until you're accountable. Nobody should get into my business. We, we will look at someone and say, we are getting into your matter. What do you think church is? You think church is a show? This is family. Well, as you do attend a family business or a family meeting, and some one boy, one person is saying, Nobody should get to my family. Family, we are familiar. We know you to your to everything, and we praise God. Then finally spread out. So step out, sit down, spread out. I round off with that, which means God, Jesus wanted to share that bread. Oh, Lord, help me. Walk with me right now. He wanted that bread to get to everybody. But what he did was he broke the bread. And he gave it to the 12. Put it up there. He gave it to his disciples. Not just anybody. The people who will handle this bread are disciples. The people who distribute this bread are disciples. There are people who will do the extra. The Bible says he blessed he, and he gave them to his disciples, set it before them. And the two and divided among them all. The next verse. Oh, fair day. And so they all ate. Let me round off this message. I began to think about, I went, I went into the movie that was playing out here, Pastor Jethro. Jesus takes the bread and breaks it and gives to his disciples. There were 5,000 people. People were 
sitting down and he gave to his disciples. When and how did the miracle of multiplication happen? Do you think it was Jesus breaking 5,000 bread? Talk to me, talk to me. Let's, let's watch the movie together. Do you think Jesus just sat down and cleaned my head? Fish. Do you think the miracle was happening only in Jesus' hands? So the first dimension of the miracle happened in Jesus' hands when he broke it and gave to his disciples. The next dimension of that miracle happened when the disciples took the same, ah, yeah, took the same bread, broke it, and gave. Am I talking to somebody in here? Then the next level took the same bread. Depending on the rank you are sitting in, the number, are you getting what I'm saying? So the secret of that miracle was passing it on. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The secret of that miracle was if you were willing to receive and release, you become part of that miracle. If you are willing to receive, it was passed to you. Don't keep it to yourself. If you want to be part of this miracle, if you be part of feeding this nation, if you want to be part of expanding DCC, don't just receive it. You will only be part of what God is said to do if you pass it on. Which means what God is said to do can touch this nation if pass it on, pass it on, pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. Look at someone say pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. Keep passing it, keep passing it, pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. If it stops at you, we stop the miracle. If it stops at you, this church will stop growing. If you just say, Pastor, loves me, I just want to get blessed. No, no, pass it on. Get the messages of this house, pass it on. Get the values of this house, pass it on. I wanted you guys to take it outside the door. You know why? There are more people out there. Stand to your faith. Stand to your faith. I came under the unction of the Holy Ghost to say to DCC, Pastor Kingsley and Mildred has broken the bread. Am I talking to somebody in here? But somebody needs to be disciplined enough. Somebody needs to step out and see what God can do with them. Somebody needs to sit down in groups and in ranks uh, and say, I'm part of this house. Uh, I'm part of seeing what God can do through this house. Somebody needs to say, the values, the vision, the mission, the assignment, the word, the messages of this house can be passed on through me. You're not a true son in this house if you're just receiving it. The beauty of that miracle, ma, as I round off, was that people didn't go back home that day and tell their neighbor, Jesus divided, Jesus fed everybody. That was not the testimony. The testimony that day was, ah, miracle happened for my hand too. Me too. You didn't get it. The testimony of that day was everybody was confessing as I took the bread. It multiplied in my hand. Can you imagine the things you've received from this house if you decide to pass it on? What will happen to this church in the next six months? You are not, you are not permitted to keep it to yourself. Did you know as they passed it on, by the time they kept passing, because everybody had experienced miracle, they were 12 baskets. Because they were looking for who to give to now. Ah, there was nobody. I bless you today that this church has experienced a shift. Many of you are going to lead the ranks, you're going to lead the groups, you're going to lead the missional communities. And as you pass it on, the miracle will happen. In your hands. As you get to your seat, go to five people and say, Pass it on, 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 pass it on. Hey, pass it on, pass it on. Raise that sound. Pass it on, pass it on. Pass on the vision of this house. Pass on the word in this house. 